So that's my background of pathophysiology. Have I got any evidence to suggest that this has actually got a role to play? All right, let's again look at sugar, refined carbohydrate, polyunsaturated oils. In the 1970s, our consumption of fructose started to increase. The top line, the grey line there is the total. And guess what that means? That means more LDL production that we created in society. What happened to our carbohydrate consumption in the 1970s? Well, that took off as well. And we've seen this graphically represented before. And under the influence of that polyol pathway, that meant not only increased glucose load, which we've heard discussed as possibly in relationship to insulin resistance, it also meant LDL production was increased. And we're now flooding the system with LDL particles. What happened to our polyunsaturated oil consumption? You can see that the purple line there, that's our increased polyunsaturated, in broad terms, vegetable oil consumption. Again, took off in the 1970s. Our consumption of the saturated fats really didn't change. The green line's the margarine one, that actually has decreased a bit, which is quite good. I'm always amazed when I go to the supermarket, there seems to be as much butter as margarine, but whenever I ask my patients if they're taking butter or margarine, they all look at me guiltily and say, but butter. So I'm trying to work out that the only way the supermarkets can maintain that margarine is it's got a longer shelf life. That means we've now got more oxidation in those low-density lipoproteins. We've filled them up with pro-inflammatory polyunsaturated oils in amounts that we've never seen before. We've done the same thing with our cell membranes and our mitochondrial membranes. And to me, that's the big issue. Have we got any proof for that? Well, Stefan Gianitz put this graph together looking at linoleic acid levels. That's the omega-6 fatty acids, the pro-inflammatory material, going back from the 1960s, experimental data where they biopsied the fat of uh, US citizens. And there's been a steady increase in the amount of omega-6, pro-inflammatory omega-6 fatty acids, gone up from 8% in the 1960s to around 24 to 25%. And I've heard someone tell me anecdotally that's as far as 30%, but they haven't published it yet. So we've had a 300% increase in the amount of pro-inflammatory fat in our fat in the last 50 years. Same thing's gone with women's breast milk. What we're feeding our babies, sorry, what the women in our life feed our babies. I've tried, it didn't work. You don't know, trick the kids with that. You know, just put the little baby in, it doesn't work out. Um, that increase is, is quite dramatic. So it's reflected in the linoleic acid level, which is the omega-6, but not in the linolenic acid level, which is the omega-3s. All of this means that we've equaled, we've created more inflammation in every cell as well as in every organ of the body. And unfortunately, along the way, in all of those biochemical pathways, we've produced more and more oxygen-free radicals. There are at least 30 studies that I know of, and we've seen some of them quoted today. And rather than go through all of those 30 studies, which isn't really my style, they're there. And as I keep saying, go and start this research for yourself and work out which path you want to travel. There's a significant role for ketogenic diets in the role of epilepsy. They've been used for you know, the best part of 90 years. The same thing with diabetes. It's the original management of diabetes. There are things, places called longevity cultures. You might have heard of blue zones. Um, Dan Buettner described these. And these are cultures around the world where the people live for a very, very long time. Okay? They live into their 90s and 100s and they die of old age. And the these have been studied as cultures to try and work out what they're doing right. What are they eating which is making a big difference? And the important factor here is to look between the lines and see what they're not eating. And what they're not eating is processed food. They're not eating sugar, they're not eating high, highly refined carbohydrates. They're definitely are avoiding polyunsaturated oils. They also have a strong strength of spirituality and community spirit and low stress levels. Coming back to the cortisol. These things work. We've got some intervention studies, even if, they, even if they, they are called historical. So in my mind, where does it leave us? Well, I actually think I'm convinced that the combination, and again, it's not just carbohydrate, it's not just sugar, and it's not just polyunsaturated oils. When you put them all together, we've created a toxic material, which is highly inflammatory. Sure, the other stuff comes in again, right? That's the small print. People ask me about all of this other small print all the time. I say, get the basics right, get the building blocks right, and then you're okay. 
So I do think that modern food is a weapon of mass destruction.